Vice President Joe Biden has us a little confused. Last weekend, he was in Selma, Alabama to commemorate the 1965 Civil Rights March known as Bloody Sunday. He hailed the progress in combating segregation and injustice and said he regretted not getting involved sooner. I have one regret that took me 48 years to get here. I should have been here. I should have been here. Okay, that's all good, but the very next day, Biden was in Washington at the APAC conference praising the Obama administration for being the only country on the UN Human Rights Council to vote against a fact-finding mission on Israeli settlements. If you think that's an unfair comparison, then maybe you haven't heard that Israeli settlers have successfully pressed the Israeli government to segregate buses in the West Bank. Stories are coming out of Palestinians being kicked off buses and told to walk to other stations. Will we have to wait another 48 years? Speaking of the APAC conference, many of its attendees took to Capitol Hill to lobby members of Congress on pro-Israel issues, and at the top of their wish list was a request that Israel's $3.1 billion in aid be exempted from the sequester cuts. At a time when the U.S. is facing cuts in vital programs like education, health care, and unemployment benefits, we think it's unseemly for APAC to ask for a special exemption for Israel's already enormous aid package. Although Washington calls Israel our best friend, the relationship is often one-sided. John Brennan has finally been confirmed as CIA director after weeks of delay. Senator Rand Paul pulled a 13-hour filibuster, the ninth longest in history, over his concern about the CIA's drone program and targeted killings of U.S. citizens abroad. Going one step further, Attorney General Eric Holder wrote in a letter to Paul that the president has the authority in an extraordinary circumstance to target U.S. citizens on American soil. Holder later clarified that the president does not have the authority to order a drone strike on an American on U.S. soil not engaged in combat. No worries. According to Brennan, we use drone strikes only as a last resort. We'd like to note that we've had a few thousand last resorts in the past couple of years. Anti-Muslim activist Pamela Geller is pouting over being blacklisted from speaking at this year's CPAC, the country's largest annual conservative conference. A regular fixture in recent years, Geller says that if CPAC won't let her speak, then she's not going. We think it's about time someone ignored her. Her inflammatory anti-Muslim, anti-Arab rhetoric is too often given a national mainstream platform, especially by the Republican Party. CPAC's decision may mean that Geller and her cohorts have been relegated to the fringe. And guess who Geller is blaming for the snub? Grover Norquist, who happens to be married to an Arab American. If Grover did have a hand in excluding Geller, then hats off to him. A new Zogby poll surveyed 20 Arab and Muslim nations on their attitudes towards Iran. AAI President Jim Zogby presented the findings along with a panel of experts at the Woodrow Wilson Center in Washington, D.C. The results show that favorable views towards Iran have decreased significantly from where they were in 2006. The reasons? Meddling in Syria and Iraq, nuclear ambitions, and other no-nos. Find out more by reading Jim Zogby's new ebook, Looking at Iran, The Rise and Fall of Iran in Public Opinion, or watch the Wilson Center's panel discussion on our website. Bottom line, Iran better shape up, and we hope they're listening.